Hi friends, welcome back to Love Good Kitchen, or welcome if this is your first time with us. My name is Matthew, and if you're new here, what do we do? We prepare some recipes, we talk about kitchen gadgets, we do various things, food and meal related. Um, and I also probably say a lot of trivial things during the course of the video um, that hopefully are entertaining, but not too annoying. At any rate, it's here. The day is here. We're making the pizza crust, my homemade pizza crust dough. We're gonna do it. I've been saying we're gonna do it for a while and it's happening. This is uh, real time, real life. I am still not changed out of my work clothes for the day. Um, one of the kids is in bed. The other one is down watching a movie before bedtime. So before I do wash the dishes for the day, we're gonna get this pizza crust going. It's not hard, uh, I don't think, um, but there are a couple moments in the process that you'll just wanna get a feel for, and the more you do it, the more um, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I encourage you to give it a try. It's not hard and it really is delicious. Now this is a sort of a combo of a recipe from Jenny Jones, yes, the former 90s talk show host Jenny Jones. She came out with a cookbook and has several YouTube videos for her recipes that are quite good. I recommend them. But it's a combination of that and um, a few other people and recipes that I saw online that I developed. And it's been, gosh, it's been maybe four years now that I've been doing it. It started during the COVID pandemic um, we weren't really going out much and um, we really like pizza, so I decided to do my own. And so here it is. This is what I would consider a traditional American style pizza crust. It's not thin crust, it's not deep dish, it's just sort of a nice, squishy American style pizza crust. And I, what else can I mention? I do want to tell you that this is what I would call a cold rise, and that is because um, this is a weeknight. I don't have time when I get home from work to be waiting for the dough to rise and do all this stuff um, because I got a young family and we gotta get dinner on the table. So this version, I prepare it the night before. I pop it in the refrigerator and it will, it will rise in the refrigerator and then um, I take it out when I get home from work and we prepare the pizza and there you go. It is not my preferred method because it's not quite as poofy as it will be if you let it rise in a warm place, but you need more time for that, at least an hour, if not an hour and a half. And then once you um, get the, the pizza dough out, uh, patted out or rolled out into whatever shape you're doing, then ideally you need another 30 minutes for it to rise there too. So that's my preferred method, special occasions, or if we do a pizza on the weekend, then I'll do that. Otherwise, we do the cold rise method. Um, so anyway, here we go. We need three cups of flour. This is bread flour, and um, you don't have to use bread flour. I have used all-purpose flour, and it's turned out fine, although it won't be quite as I don't know, what's a good word for it when you use bread flour? It's just a little more, um, I don't know that delicate is the right word, but it's just creates a nice dough. How about that? There's two cups, we need three cups. I'm just tumbling it into my one cup measure here, leveling it off. And there we go. Also, you need one package. This is a 0.25 ounce envelope of active dry yeast. We're gonna dump the whole thing in there. I guess it would help if I actually cut the package open. I'll try that. There. Get these out of the way. Or, or throw it in the dough, that works too. I did wash my hands before I started. So if we got any cleanliness trolls out there, I did. 
Um, then we need one and a half teaspoons of sugar. There's one. There's a half. And then we need about a half teaspoon of salt. I'm using kosher salt, but I have used table salt before or whatever salt you have um, would be fine. Those are our dry ingredients. I'm just gonna whisk it for a second here to get the yeast and the salt and sugar a little bit more evenly distributed through that dough mixture. I think that's about good. Also, you may notice I'm using my red vintage Cinderella style Pyrex mixing bowl. This is 95% of the time. This is the bowl that I always do. My pizza dough in is just what I do. I have used other bowls and it's turned out fine. This is just the one that I always go to. It's my pizza bowl. Wednesday nights are pizza nights um, at our house. So we do it all the time. Okay, so these are our dry ingredients. Next, we need a cup and a third of very warm, I use tap water, um, and what I usually do is let the tap run as hot as I can get it. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, here we go. That's a cup and a third. I know some recipes, some cooks say that the water needs to be about 115 degrees. I have actually tried to use my thermo thermometer to um, check the temp on the water and this is just me I found that 115 it wasn't warm enough it didn't do the trick because um, my dough just didn't turn out the way I wanted so I let my tap go as warm as it can maybe that has something to do with the, the cold rise letting it rise in the fridge thing too could be um, I have some olive oil. You need two tablespoons of olive oil and we're just gonna put it right into this water like that and give it a stir. Then we're going to add this into our flour and yeast and I don't know why I do this, but I do that much. There's about a half cup-ish left. My favorite utensil to mix this is a fork. I've tried other things. A spoon doesn't really keep it evenly loose. That doesn't make any sense, but maybe you know what I mean. And like a whisk, that doesn't work because that's too open. Fork does it just right. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm just stirring to get those dry flour and yeast and whatever particles. moistened. Okay, and so then I'm going to add the rest of my water and olive oil. Now this dough is going to be wet. It's not going to be pourable, not that wet, but it is going to be a wet dough. Make sure there are no bits hiding on the bottom. Okay. So it, it is pretty wet, put that there. Now in here I have some all-purpose flour, and that's what I use to knead the dough, because we are gonna knead it a little bit. We're not gonna go crazy with it. But I'm generous with the flour when I'm kneading um, to, to kind of finish adding the flour into the dough. Um, and we'll talk about texture and the feel of it when it gets to be just right here in a moment. But I use all flour, all purpose flour for this step because um, I'm frugal. And frankly, bread flour is on the expensive side. So that's just what I do. You could use certainly use the bread flour for this part. Anyway, okay, so let's get this onto our floured surface. Now we don't want a ton of 
dough stuck to the edge of the bowl. You'll know why here in a minute. Get this off my hand. Get this off the fork. And then to start us off, we're gonna take a very generous scoopy of flour and put that on like that. Don't worry, it seems crazy, but it's gonna work out. So we just kind of, I roll it around to get it coated and started. And then this is how I need my pizza dough. I kind of fold it up and in, and then I smush it with my hands over and over. I was not trained at the Culinary Institute. This may not be your preferred way to knead dough, but that's just how I do. So we're gonna keep going, and the remaining flour that's down here. Hi, my name is Ramsey, and I'm helping Daddy, and you, and you. Ramsey sighting. Hi, hi, honey. I hi. love you. Sleep tight. Okay. Um, so we keep going, and this, the flour that is remaining. It's a little more than a dusting, but on the side, I keep, as I feel with my fingers, a section that might be sticky, then that's when I know I need to bring a little more of that flour in, but I keep folding and squishing, folding and squishing. I'm not using intense pressure, but I am pushing down. Some of that in. Got a piece hanging on there. It's already looking good. I haven't been counting. I don't know how many times I've folded and pushed. But I don't know, it's a couple minutes. I think my original recipe that I put together said like three or four minutes, or maybe it was three to five minutes of kneading. I don't think I do that much. I just go until fold and smush, press, squish, Just go until it starts to feel, and I know we've heard this before, and you're at first you're like, what? Until it feels smooth and elastic. But that really is the case. Um, it's a texture thing. It's not sticking to my hands anymore. And um, it's not sticky to my hands and it just feels a little more even. The color is more even. We don't have any white spots or any spots that are. And then I always do this at the end. I don't know what this is. I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it. Then I give it a push and I turn, turn, turn. And that's about it. We've got a lovely dough ball. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, so we did that. Now in the same bowl that I used to mix up the dough, I'm gonna take some non-stick cooking spray and you're gonna give it a good coat. You don't have to worry about getting it all the way up to the, the lip, the rim, the edge of your bowl, but at least three quarters of the way up because the dough is gonna rise a little bit. You don't want it to stick. Then you take your dough ball, you plop it in and then all we do is grab our plastic wrap. Let me get that. And this is gonna seem a little crazy because the cutter thingy on my plastic wrap got a little janky. And so we're gonna start this way. That wasn't too bad. And then you're just going to cover your dough or your, the top of the bowl like this with your plastic wrap. It doesn't have to be hermetically sealed, however you do want it to be. I 
nicely covered. And that's it. I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator um, and it's gonna rise a little bit, or not a lot of it, but a decent amount. Um, it's gonna rise in the fridge. And then tomorrow, when I go to take it out and prepare our pizza for baking, I'll bring it back and we'll show it to you. All right, so we'll be back. See you tomorrow. Hello, and we're back. So our dough was in the refrigerator since last night. Um, and if you're wondering how long is too long, like can you leave it in the refrigerator for too long, the answer is yes. Um, and it's not that it deflates or whatnot, but um, it does the, out, the outer edges or the outer surface of the dough starts to get a little weird. So I wouldn't recommend doing it crazy far in advance, but the night before we're good to go. You can see that it has risen a nice amount. Again, not as much as if you were gonna do um, a warm rise, rise in a warm place, but this works for busy families or if you're trying to get things ready in advance. I forgot to get our flour out because we're gonna dust our surface with a little bit of flour. Crash. Before we pat it out. So I'm gonna do that. But actually, you know what? Before I do that, we're gonna do this. I have my pizza stone. This is a Pampered Chef pizza stone. I love it. Um, it heats evenly, the bottom gets like just the right amount of crispy. Um, I just love stoneware stuff. In the past, before my Pampered Chef days, I have used one of those metal pizza pans that has the holes in it. That can work pretty well, although you have to be careful with those that the bottom doesn't get uh, too crispy or too burnt. Um, you could also use a half sheet pan if you want to do a rectangular pizza, all of those will work, or even a cookie sheet if you don't have those. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil. I don't know how much that is. It's that much, a circle around. And I'm gonna take my brush here and I'm just going to kind of paint it around the edge. This is serving two purposes for me. And my pizza and one is so that it doesn't stick at all to the pizza pan and then the other is that by doing this the bottom gets a lovely light crust crustiness um, not burnt but just the right amount so I'm just gonna smoosh this around and that about does it, okay. Set that here. I also forgot to mention um, in the first part of this video that um, this is not, I'm not claiming in any way that this is authentic Italian pizza. So please, I don't, need to hear feedback from your Sicilian great-grandmother that this is not the technique. I get it. I'm sure it's not, but this is the pizza recipe that I and my family, we really like. So, um, you know, even if you don't use the whole recipe, maybe there are um, parts of the recipe or the technique or whatever that are going to work for your pizza making. So, um, I'm just going to loosen it a little bit from the side of the bowl. Now, remember, I did spray it. So it doesn't really have trouble coming out there. So we've got our blob and I closed my flour, but I am just a little bit gonna just sprinkle a tad bit on there. Now, I don't like to use a rolling pin for this part. Um, I have tried using the rolling pin before and I find it easier just to sort of do this cat paw patty pat business instead of rolling it and I kind of go out from the center but I like it because um, I can feel the thickness under my fingers of the dough so I can feel if there if a certain part is a little thicker or thinner I can adjust it and I just pat 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 and kind of spread it out 
We this is a 15 inch pizza pan and I have a measuring tape here because that's just how I am. We are aiming to get this circle of dough to 14 inches because I found that that is just the right amount. It'll stretch a little bit when we transfer it onto the pan. And so that's just the right amount so that it fits perfectly on our pizza pan. You certainly wouldn't have to measure it. That's just what I like to do because I'm kind of OCD with stuff like that. Okay, we're getting there. Really doesn't take long. This is just about there. I will use the measuring tape here in a second. But I'm just doing the patty pat, 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 pat. And I can feel with my hands, it's pretty even. We're, we're in a good place here. Okay, let's check it out. We're aiming for 14, perfectly 14. Okay, before we get to the next step, um, I'm gonna do this. So um, this is pepperoni. We're doing pepperoni, traditional pepperoni pizza tonight. And what I like to do is take my pepperoni from the package and I put it on a plate with some paper towel underneath and I put it in one layer. I'm gonna pop it in the microwave for about a minute and 15 seconds or so. And what that does is it draws out some of the grease from the pepperoni and that way your pepperoni is crispy on the pizza but yet you don't have any of that um, grease to deal with. And it's also a little healthier for us. So I love that. So I'm gonna pop this in here. Okay, and while that's going, I'm going to fold this up to transfer it onto our pan, and I'm just sprinkling very lightly the surface of our pizza dough with some flour, and then I have my bench scraper here. Just gonna loosen it on the edge, and we're gonna go in half, just like that, and then a little sprinkle, and it's almost like an immeasurable amount, just a very light sprinkle, but that way it doesn't stick. I know from experience in the past I have not sprinkled some flour, and then I wasn't able to get my pizza dough for unstuck together. Okay, so we just transfer it onto here and then we unfold it. And then I'm just gonna, again, use my hands to kind of pat it out to fit the pizza pan. That's gonna be just right. Now, like I said, this is not gonna be as poofy and soft as it would be if we um, had done the, the rise in a warm place version, but uh, sort of a intermediary step, if you have 15 or 20 minutes, um, once you get to this step um, and then you put your toppings on, which we're gonna do in a second, you can put it in a warm place and let it rise for 15 or 20 minutes and that will um, do a great job as well of giving it a little extra lift in the dough. We're not gonna do that today because I got kiddos waiting um, for us to eat dinner, uh, but you can do that. And by the way, a warm place, what does that mean? That means approximately 80 degrees. Did you know that? So when, when you do recipes or read recipes and it says, um, oh, let it rise in a warm place, most of us do not have a kitchen or a dining room or whatever that's 80 some degrees. Um, unless you live somewhere that's warm and you don't use air conditioning. So um, that doesn't mean it's not gonna rise, it's just gonna take a lot longer than what it says on the recipe. So knowing that, what you can do is, sometimes I turn on the oven uh, to like 200 or 250 and just let it heat up a little bit and then turn it off and let the temperature come down a little bit and then once it's cool enough but it's still warm you can put your, your dough whatever you're making in there and let it rise that'll work um, 
I've also, because I have the double oven, I've turned on preheated the upper oven and then set the uh, pizza dough, wherever it is, on top of the range. The range isn't on, but the oven underneath it is on. There's enough residual heat that that works nicely. Um, I do want to mention that if you decide to let this rise for 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes after you put the toppings on, you should cover it. Um, either with a, a lightly with a kitchen towel or with some plastic wrap, but you do want to cover it so that it doesn't, it'll get kind of funny on the top. Okay, let me rinse my hands. Um, let me grab the pepperoni out here. So look at that. So the pepperoni is nice and crisp, um, but not burnt, and a lot of that grease has gone into the paper towel. So we don't have to worry about that. Love that. Okay, next up, I'm going to put on the sauce. This is the Aldi brand uh, Reggiano pizza sauce. They haven't always had this. This is a newer thing that they started carrying, at least in my Aldi, and it's very good. I recommend it. Um, the only thing that I like better, I've tried many, many different brands. Um, the only one I like better is called, and I'm probably not pronouncing this properly, but it's called Dai Fratelli. Um, wonderful. A little bit spicy, and I don't mean hot spicy, I mean spiced. It's delicious. The only thing is I don't get that all the time because it's kind of expensive in my opinion. For a can, I don't know what that is, 15 ounce can, it's like two dollars and some change um, for us that's a lot but once in a while I do get it so I'm gonna use let me get a spoon I'm gonna use about half of this on this pizza and I would in a general way of speaking I would consider this a large pizza and you're gonna get What's for supper? 12 slices sort of medium size a few less if you're going to do large pieces, and of course, um, I'm referring to the round version. If you're doing a rectangular pizza, then it's going to be different, especially depending on how big you cut your pieces. But just to give you kind of a point of reference, yes, you can put too much sauce. Um, I know from experience. I, I don't like my pizza to be too dry, so I like there to be I mean, just a little bit more. I don't like there to be like not enough sauce, but you can put too much. If it's just laden, is that the right word? With sauce, then um, it gets a little soggy even when you're after you bake it. So I don't recommend you do that. You set that aside. Kelly? Got that on there. Um, next up, I'm going to put a little bit of Italian seasoning, maybe a little garlic powder. Let me do the garlic powder first. I just do a sprinkling kind of around the edge. I don't know why, this is just how I do it. And then a little bit across the center like that. I'm going to take my Italian seasoning, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't know. This is probably like somewhere between one and two teaspoons. There we go. And then I'm going to place the pepperoni on. And I always start from the outside. Again, I don't know why. That's just how I do it. Good. And then I kind of go in the spaces ish. Spaces, 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 spaces. And then I keep going in the middle. I hope this is in the frame of the camera. Can you see? And then I just take the remaining ones and I kind of fill them in wherever. That looks good to me. Okay. Um, last but not least, I'm going to take some. Parmesan, grated Parmesan cheese. And sprinkle that. And then I have preheated the oven to 425. And I would also recommend that you 
put this on the bottom part. It doesn't have to be the bottom rack, but um, the bottom part of your oven. It'll just help it be crisp on the bottom. And you'll notice that I did not put any uh, mozzarella or any other cheese on there. I like to wait. Um, I cook it, I bake it for 10 minutes, and then I take it out, then I sprinkle the cheese on, and I bake it for another four minutes to melt the cheese nicely. And that's how I like to do it because I find if you put the cheese on right away, then the cheese can get burned and I just don't like how it turns out. And then the other thing is I put the pepperoni on the bottom and then the cheese on top because if you do the opposite, which I know a lot of people do, um, but I tend not to like that because then when you take a bite, the cheese and the pepperoni, it all slides off and then you're left with a mess. This way, that doesn't happen, at least for me. So, okay, I'm gonna pop this in the oven for 10 minutes. I'm gonna bring you back to put the cheese on and we're, we also might have a helper for the, the cheese sprinkling. So I'll see you back in a minute. Hi, this is me, Ramsey. Okay, we're back. This is Ramsey, he's the cheese helper today. And our pizza just came out of the oven, mm -hmm. which was at 425, and it was in there for 10 minutes. Okay. So, now I'm gonna put on the pizza seeds, and then we're gonna be all done. So the pizza seeds is gonna be ready in a couple minutes. Ow! Yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful, don't you? Okay, now you take a pinch in your fingers and we're gonna sprinkle it on. Okay, I will. Try to keep it on the pizza, okay? So, how was your day? How was their day? Yeah. Ramsey wants to know how your day was. You can comment below if you would like to let him know. Okay, how are we doing there? Well, are you it, sprinkling? Don't do it in all in one spot. Huh. I like there to be enough cheese, but not so much so that it's in a solid layer and you can't see anything. But underneath. can we just have all the seeds, guys? Because then it will be more better with water. Not it's, with it's better with all the cheese? Yeah, it's better with all the seeds, guys. Come on. It's all gone. Yay. We did it. All right, good job. Thanks for your help, Ramsey. We're going to put it back into our oven yep. for four minutes. Yep. And then we'll bring you back. Okay, so here we are. It's out of the oven. It's all done. It took about four minutes for the baking to finish and the cheese to get melty. So all that's left is to slice it up and enjoy. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. The recipe will be posted in the description box down below. Um, leave me a comment if you have some thoughts on this, but it's my family's favorite and yeah, we like it Wednesday nights or pizza night for us. So um, let me know. Do you have a pizza night and what do you like to do? We do different kinds, but tonight we did the traditional, uh, I mean different types of toppings. But tonight we did the good old pepperoni. So give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed chatting and putting this recipe together with me. Subscribe if you haven't already. It helps out my channel and that way you'll also be notified when we post a new video. So until next time, thanks and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.